my turn for topics. Mine comes from Patreon. Can this we, one comes. Can we break for one second? Sure. Daddy had a lot of coffee. Okay. Or you can say a topic and I can nope, hear you. I can't because okay. you can't. That's all right. All right, my topic. We're back from Nick's pee break. Thanks. This one comes from patreon.com slash kind of funny. You can go there. You can sponsor us there. You get your topic read just like Umar did. Umar's topic is what thing? I'm sorry. What thing that sucked would you go back and fix? Specifically, what movie slash TV show slash game that was flawed would you go back and make right? In this situation, the thing that sucked would have never existed. Your product would be the, the fixed version, but the original. It was, so it wouldn't be that like you're remastering it. You're it, you erase the knowledge yeah. of the original and you have this now. I mean, okay, Star Wars, right? Easy answer. Let's not say that. Though. Something different. That's how you sound right now. Yeah, that's how I meant. To I mean, Star Wars. Star Wars came to mind for me. Too. Superman yeah, Returns. It's, it's, really? it's a little trite. Yeah. Yeah, I would have gone with one of the Superman. I don't know why. I would have taken Man of Steel, no. Returns. The Man of Steel's built the universe. They they're committed. They think it's good. <laughs> Superman Returns. I would have been come back, shown it to Brian Singer, and been like, "They cut out your first part and replace it with text. Terrible way to open a movie. Secondly, this is your only shot at it. Don't make a fucking boring ass movie. Have him punch something. Don't do this kid thing. Fucking yeah, suck oh it up. God, the kid thing. Have uh, James Marsden be Metallo, and then we can all fucking go from there. Yeah, that was one of those weird movies where you're like, he has an illegitimate child. Yeah. They wrote that into a Superman movie, right? That he left. Superman he left on for five years. Is a deadbeat dad. No, oh, that's a head, you're jumping. Gone for five years. He didn't know. He doesn't <laughs> care about his he son. He didn't know. You're not also, allowed to say he doesn't care. How does Lois have the kid without it punching through her uterus? Now you're just taking all rats' logic. But there is logic to be had there, right? I mean. It's one of those things I where mean, I'm like, it depends just... on what iteration of the thing we're going with and oh, stuff. Jesus, I know okay. now we were, in the, we were in the Donner universe where as soon as he was on Earth, he had powers. So, yes, great point. Would the vitamin, would the sunlight that she had ingested and the vitamin D then have gotten to his cells as well? In a residual form, you'd think so. Because when he was a kid, he lifted the tractor so that Pa Kent wasn't killed by the tractor. Right. Or something like that. I might be remembering that incorrectly from Superman. I mean, you, you're, yeah, you're jumping. Was I it mean, one of those, so the corn remember things? Remember, he corn was like, <laughs> There was it, for the Pa Kent story was he was changing the the tire right after they picked him up. Oh right, and then it, it, it got off the jack and he Cal caught and the it. kids just like and he showed his dick. His, his dick like, out. My yeah. pee pee, my pee pee, right, Kevin? He didn't say anything about his pee pee. <laughs> Kevin, Kevin my is pee-pee. moving his thing around. But I would go back because Brian Singer is a talented director. He's good. He does awesome work. I like that. And I think he th- he thought he had more rope than he had with Superman Returns. I it would be fascinating. You again, you don't really know how things go off the rails, right? There's so many people involved with the approval processes for films that you don't you can't blame Brian Singer for a bad. No, film. not at all. The guy knows how to make a good film. Days of Future Past, I liked. A yeah, lot. It's a good movie. Uh, X2, Usual X2. Suspects yeah, X2, was man. awesome. X two was and awesome. Jamskis. Yeah, it was good enough. Um. Uh, he had unfortunately the 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 problem of, with X two that he had to follow up X one, which was like they kind of set up all the characters in a weird wonky way. But it was good. It was it was a cool film and it was it, action was great. I liked how they treated Wolverine. Um, what was her name? Uh, Lady Deathstrike. Yeah, she was a little weird. Uh, but Kelly Hugh, what's up? Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, listening uh, out there. What's up? When Mystique had that line. She's like bottoms up, and then like she puts the shot in the guy's butt. I or the part funny. where she like slides and she's like, Oof. oh, that was cool. She's like, that was fucking good. Nightcrawler um, scene so in the beginning. He, Nightcrawler a, in general. Yeah. He's a good storyteller. He's a great director. But it's one of those things where you're like, you don't know how he wound up with that script. I don't know if he was like, look, we shouldn't do this, and people are like, no, I don't know, this is gonna play. I know. Or... I mean, the way I understand it is that he, I mean, from the involvement and watching it and like how the comic book he tied into and everything is, it was just gonna be even longer. Like he had he had filmed all the stuff where he, Superman went out to Krypton that would have been dope in the to spaceship, see. and I think I'm, from what I understand, and maybe I'm just I, maybe I've heard rumors. I can't verify this isn't from firsthand. Is the studio watched this like three hour Superman movie? It was like get him to fucking Earth. Nobody yeah. wants to see him flying around, and that's why it opens up and it's like Superman's been gone for five years. And Krypton was they thought destroyed, but it's back. Kind of no, it's not. All right, Superman's been gone. That's what it says. <laughs> yeah, it's just terrible text <laughs> that's, on that's, screen. That's crazy to me because that's way more like that story element would have been way more fascinating to watch because we've never seen that on film. Like actually him trying to go and find Krypton and maybe yeah. potentially finding what's this? He, he finds it all split up and just, right. he says in the movie he, all he found was a graveyard. That but that would have been cool yeah. to start there or see that in the opening credits or something like that and then see him coming back. I mean, a good example of everything they cut to is like Cal Penn's in it from Harold and Kumar, right? Yeah. He says nothing. No, he has, he has not no one line, lines. Not and one in the line. comic books, you read talking left and right about yeah. all this stuff. And there's mm. this backstory about a help Luther in the, in uh, in uh, the prison and all this other stuff. And it's just like, well, now we need to shave time off this movie. So all of Lex's companions are silent idiots. Yeah, they were all silent and dumb, except for the guy that had the wicked tattoo on the back of his head. That was kind of weird. Uh, it was like a tattoo of a demon. That's one of those. 
that I that it would have been cool to go back and and sort of remake if you could go back to that that just tell them just tell them this is what's up you got to correct your course I mean it's it's so again it's it I always kind of hesitate to criticize especially a film that's that important because at the time that was a very very big film yeah like you you think of it now you're like oh we got Man of Steel we got every single comic book freaking movie that sure. you could ever sure, possibly sure, sure, want sure. at the time that Superman Returns comes you saw that trailer and you were like oh. My God, this is going to be amazing. This has to be amazing. This, there's, there's no, it can't be not good. It just, it was just like Star Wars. We were like, this is going to be the greatest film ever made. And so, of course, you're gonna, there's going to be some letdown to some degree. Like mm-hmm. spoilers, uh, every film that we see from now on is not going to be as good as Avengers. It's not going to be as good as Dark Knight Rises or, excuse me, Returns, not Rises, <laughs> no, because you, you just, because <laughs> it's so hard to live up to that, right? But back when Superman Returns came out, you were like, "Wow, we, had, we haven't seen a Superman yeah. film since the Donner film, or since uh, Superman: The Quest for Peace, right?" Yeah, um, which is was Superman. 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 <laughs> um, so yeah, but I mean, again, when you're making something, when you're in the thrust of it, and when you're in the in the middle of making something, you can't, you don't have that perspective like mm-hmm. you do. So you know, ten years later, sitting in a podcast room with your three friends, going like, "Oh, he should have done this." No, done I that. get that, you but that's where that that's what we can bring to him. So that, yeah, if going, we're time traveling, you can tell him like that the movie does not pan out well. You need to adjust course. Going back, I would have said, "Look, here's what you need to do." Same with what I would tell you know anyone who's directing that film is. You got to find a way to have a really convincing villain, like someone who is really ominous and really, really imposing, and someone that has dimensions. That's not just a "Hi, I'm gonna make another continent." It's like what, what? Like no. Remember the one, the one storyline I've had since the original Superman movie. I'm doing it again. That's so like, like base and one dimensional, right? Like, yeah, it, it doesn't make any sense, and you start to think about. The iconic villains, like every great hero story, has to have a great villain, or else, what is the point? What is he fighting against? What is he striving toward? You start to look at like like Darth Vader, for instance, where on on on, on a very ancillary level, yeah, sure, he's one dimensional, right? he's a bad guy, but he's not because eventually he starts taking on a whole new dimension in Jedi, where you're like, he's actually torn now he's trying to save his son and the only way he can save his son is by inducting him into the dark side is bringing him over because that's the only way he can think to save him he doesn't see another option because he's so closed off he's lived this life for so long and now that his son chooses death over coming to him finally he sees there is a third option there's another way i can sacrifice myself to save my son boom empire emperor up over the fucking thing why his no all he could do was shock him this there's a man that could like lift the fucking star destroyer with his brain like shit what's going on no ah! uh, it's, I just always this love, is beyond me I mean like I you're reading a little bit into the performance and stuff but I like it I like that you are because I just, I always think back to just how emotive he was in that scene of <laughs> for those of you listening at home Greg has pulled out. his shirt over his it face it was worth it god damn it and, um, physical comedy's never easy by the way no, I, wanted, but, I, I wanted to show me real quick I was laughing earlier when you said uh it's hard to say how something would go off the rails, and I was like, "Have you listened to this show?" Oh no! <laughs> but like, let's let's make no moans about it. This show is probably just a giant shit show for the outside viewer. So if anyone that's like, I, I would I would say that most people like watching this show because of that. Because it goes yeah. off the rails so often. I mean, can we just appreciate for a second that we for fifty minutes talked about soda, and then for an additional I don't know forty minutes talked about hardcore politics, and now we're just talking about Superman. Yeah. And it all felt the same. <laughs> like, same line. That's crazy. Same line. <laughs> but that's what, these kinds of podcasts are a dime a dozen, though. Right, Kev? <laughs> you got that's burned. a callback into earlier in the episode when, when Kevin and Colin have a rivalry now. My answer is um, definitely Transformers. Like, yeah. The movies. Yeah. I got like, it on eBay. Here's the problem with that, though. <laughs> You go, back, you, go back and, six, nine, one, two. you go back and tell the producers. I forget mm-hmm. who produces Transformers. It's not Michael Bay? It's, it's, no, he's the director, but I, it's like... Rockheimer? Maybe it is Brookheimer. It's Brookheimer. Um, no, is it Brookheimer so. or is it's it not. De Laurentiis? I can't remember. I can look it up. You keep that, talking. It doesn't matter. Um, you go back and tell them, hey, you got to change this movie or else it's going to be really bad, but it's still going to make yeah, yeah, worldwide the thing, no, half so, a billion dollars or a billion dollars. They're going to go like this. We don't give a shit. Yeah, but they, they don't they care don't know, about the script. But, but they don't know. I know. Exactly. But that doesn't matter. Like That's not what this question is. Right. This question is, is what would we change and fix? Sure. What I would do is... Just make sure that they don't – It's it all comes down to the character designs. If the character designs weren't so convoluted and just garbage messes of just, like, so much going on – and I'm not even going to hate on the designs. Like, I don't think they're that bad, but I just wish that they weren't, they weren't as complicated because if they were simpler, then 
they wouldn't have cost as much money to animate all the CG, like correct. all the fight scenes and stuff, correct. which would have meant that the movie could have been about the Transformers instead of about Shia LaBeouf and his girlfriend and right. like a bunch of stupid human subplots. Like all of those movies' biggest problem is the, the fact Transformers that it's not side about characters? the Transformers. Yeah, it's very true. And so the, the, the reason they did that, though, is because uh, it was so expensive to animate the Transformers, which makes sense. But it's like if they were easier to animate and they like it, they weren't as complex and like every freaking shot with Optimus Prime turning like this involved 10 million moving parts because mm -hmm. his freaking neck had a freaking all this shit. If it was just more boxy and stuff, which I understand isn't like the, no, the aesthetic they, they were could. going for. But there is a nice middle ground they could have went with. The problem and the thing that you're talking about right now is that like is that by making them so complex, they don't have it's very, very hard for the audience to relate to them from a human's perspective. And you have to be able to do that in you with your characters. It's one of the reasons why a lot of people are really, really worried that they're gonna make a Halo movie one day and have Master Chief, because the same thing you're talking about with Vader, it's like it's even worse than Master Chief. He doesn't even have a face. It's just a glaring like reflection, right? And so it's hard for you to empathize with someone like that, especially when they're your main character. With the Transformers, part of his name is Master Chief, which is like the worst name ever. <laughs> that's it's, that's very true as well. Um, with the Transformers, especially, they don't like your eye looks at that and goes, This is a foreign object that's not a human, it has no soul. It's just something that's up there that I think I'm gonna try to look at for until my eyes break. Um, but see, that's my problem with Transformers, though, like, with, with the movies is that, like, I feel like that only really happened because they were next to the humans and stuff. Like, when some – all the best Transformers stories are usually told and there's, humans aren't even involved. And you just kind of forget about it. It doesn't matter. And my favorite thing about Transformers is that the best Transformers stories and the most, like, cool things that happen don't involve them transforming or turning into anything. It's just them. and They're just characters and they happen to be things that can transform, but they don't. It's just they, they act as humans would act. So it's like they could have done that if the writing was better and all that mm -hmm. stuff. And it's just yeah, because that's, that's the other thing too. They were like they were weird foreign aliens. They they didn't feel like real things, right? Like they didn't have seemingly real emotions. They were just kind of there to protect the planet, you know. And you were yeah, like, I mean, why can't you have a real? And then they have that weird goofy scene where it's like, oh my bad, like, like yeah. The I mean, there's so much forced here? humor and, and all that stuff. But like, I even like that's what I would do. though, was change the character designs, which mm -hmm. would then allow the Transformers to be the main characters. That'd be great. If I couldn't do that, I think there's another option, mm. which would just be build off of what they did with Transformers 1. I think they could have fixed things with Transformers 2. If they just kind of... That's not how sequels work. I, I, I know, but just built off of the, the framework of that 1 was. Mm -hmm. 1 wasn't that bad. I liked it. At one. least set a world up. I liked so the, the first 2 could have came in and like built upon that and then been like, all right, cool. Now it is about the Transformers. Now, we already have these convoluted designs made for seven, eight characters. Mm -hmm. We'll add three more. We already have them made. See, they built upon it when they put Robot Heaven in it. The problem, the, the, <laughs> big, the big problem Stop is this. Work, work the, big, the big problem is this, is that wow. the, in, in order for those big movies to make their money back, they have to sell in foreign markets. And the number one thing that doesn't sell well in foreign markets are really intricately told stories in English. So um, that's why a lot of indie films just don't make money, because... The humor of a, a of a Zach Braff indie film doesn't really translate well into Chinese, right? Mm -hmm. And the Chinese and the Chinese uh, China is the biggest uh, market for consumers on the planet right now for anything, especially film. So you want your film to sell and be really, really, really good for the Chinese people because they're the ones that are going to actually probably uh, that's where you're going to make your money back. So they it, the way that starts to work is that they start to go well. We don't really give a shit too much about the story about this, right? What we need are eye popping visuals. Half of which need to take place in China because they're actually funding this film. Yeah. Um, and that becomes a huge problem in that when you have a sequel, they're like, well, we need this done. We need to make our, we need to make in this quarter or whatever. We need to make this certain specific amount of money. So you have six months to get this done. Mm -hmm. So what's the first thing that goes, right, is the script, is the story. You can't spend three months crafting a nice story when they're like this. It's famously, that happened in Iron Man 2 where they were still shooting while they were writing the script. And it was like, yeah. this is going to be chaos. Like toward the, There's no third act in that film. Like you go back and watch Iron Man two and you're like, oh, oh, it's done, it's done. They're, oh, they just beat Whiplash. Cool. I'm Whiplash. I'm gonna, I'm dead. 
Yeah. yeah. Um, and the same thing with Iron Man 1 as well. But so, so that's the big problem with that. I think in order to fix that, there's a third option, though, for you. Just redo the movie with all the original cartoon sound effects. Yes. And that well, would be amazing. I mean, they as the movies go on, they, they <laughs> kind of do. Well, I mean, not all Remember of them. But, the, like, they do add a lot more of that in the movies, just like right. fan service, just to keep the people being like, oh, my God, they used that it sound. It is And it's like, yeah, exactly. And it's just like. I got it on eBay. Got it. It was. It was that's, what I, that's the only thing I remember from the original Transformers. I saw it in the theater with Mark Ryan. And that's the only thing I remember about it was, well, two things. One, the fight scenes are fucking garbage. They are muddled messes. Like, I, I remember watching. I'm like, I don't even know what the hell is going on. I'm just like, yeah, like, all these yeah. moving parts. I'm like, all right, you spent how much money making that? I have no idea what the fuck you're supposed to even be showing. Right. And then I remember the whole eBay oh, uh, tie-in. Oh, God. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's like all I remember. See, but th- th- that is the one good thing about 2 is that it did have – it had one fight scene in a forest that they went to the forest for the specific reason of you can see what's happening. We're going to have the camera zoom out. There's not fucking buildings and explosions everywhere. It's people fucking fighting. And you can actually see what they're doing, kind of. Mm -hmm. Because they're still convoluted messes. But at least it was somewhere. There's these leaked screenplays that I highly recommend people reading if they're interested in Transformers at all. And uh, uh, they're uh, they're not leaked screenplays. They're like... uh, Fanfic. It's essentially fanfic. But it's just like propose like screenplays for what Transformers 2 and 3 could have been. My God. Like... The coolest things I've ever read, and it's like yeah. it, it fixed it. You they took the story from one and kept going, and like two, it was awesome. And Starscream like took over Las Vegas, and like that's how they got the humans involved. Was just he he created this world where all these like people were just under his rule, and then it, it created the subsections of the Decepticons being split and the Autobots having to fight and stuff. And it was actually interesting mm. and cool, and didn't involve that many Transformers. But they were there. Humans, side characters. Then the third movie, even more fucking cool. It involved time travel. Who gives a shit? That is that complicated? Yeah. Paradox. But was it awesome? Yes, because they went back to the '80s and they, for plot point, whatever, their looks looked more boxy and like shitty oh, because it was a different time. I'm like fuck yeah, that's what I want from a goddamn third movie in a thing right. where it's like already being watched. I'd watch that. I'd watch that one. So, yeah. What was the one with Mark Wahlberg? That was the last. That one, was right? the fourth hey, one. Think which, I'm man, a Transformer. Like, I'm a huge Transformers fan. One of the biggest Transformers fans. Even the movies, Spider-Man. like I love them yeah. just yeah, because they are Transformers. Mm-hmm. One, I was like okay. Yeah. Two, I was like it has fight sleep. scenes and I'll, I'll still stand for it. Three, I was like. That's the one with Fuck. Rose Wilmington Hunt. Yeah, right? but I was like, it still has some moments that I really enjoy. And then four, I was like, they lost you. Hate you. You know what sucks, though, is that I started watching that film, and I was like, I like Mark Wahlberg in this. It's just the right amount of corny, right? He's yeah. got the hot daughter. They've got, the, you know, the dynamic with the boyfriend I thought was cool. I'm like, oh, we got it. we're starting to tell a little cool story here. Then right when the feds show up, well, first of all, he gets Optimus Prime. And the time between him finding Optimus Prime and, like, figuring out what it is is like, there's like nothing there's no there's everything felt like they were like this is a story element cut it out Mm -hmm. oh this story element cut it out we need to get to the action fast even the action felt like they cut out parts of the action so that we could get to more action faster that's why it was all muddled up and bullshit it was no but like have you seen the fourth one there are moments in the fourth one where it doesn't make any sense like the editing is so chaotic that you're like Mark Wahlberg just for no reason goes from driving a car to like he's out of the car shooting at someone and then we don't see him for like twenty more minutes. Yeah, no, like it doesn't <laughs> make any sense. The fourth, the fourth is it, it's it has just so God. so many God. issues. Like the one there is there is a couple like real nice nods to like old things that happen in Transformers. Like Ratchet has this really good scene in the beginning well, when he dies. Spoilers that no one gives a fuck <gasps> yeah. about. But who's Ratchet? But uh, but there's there's like nothing good about that movie besides that because all the character development of the last three movies, which was the one thing I was holding on to, all of a sudden they decide that uh, Optimus yeah. Prime. Is just a motherfucking um, asshole that doesn't care and will kill humans and stuff. No, I don't give a shit what people do. Optimus Prime will not kill a motherfucking he won't kill a human. He's shooting at them. Yeah, he's blown away. The fuck? Sam he's... changed him. Like even in the, se- the second, the second motherfucking Transformers movie starts off with a scene where Optimus Prime holds a gun to a Decepticon's head, fucking shoots him point blank. Yeah, he doesn't kill. Welcome to the that, realities like of Superman. war. That is not Optimus Prime. That is not War never changes. Um, Sorry, you wanted the same boring ass <laughs> nonsensical story you got on many times before. On a different note, what would you change? The other one I would change would probably be the only thing that comes to mind is Prometheus. That's oh. one of those movies where oh, I I didn't even see, I wanted to see that so bad, and people were like, I, I think so with my brother was like, and here I, know, I was like, why no no no? Here's the here's the deal with that. I mean, it it, it had the best no no side creamer no just black is fine. Um, that was to Kevin. It had the best intentions, right? And it was trying to be super ambitious. 
And it just got somewhere along the ri- lines, I think, and Damon Lindelof is quoted as saying, like, look, dude, I was like the 13th writer on this thing, and I was just trying to, like, salvage it. It just became too much. And that was what I feel like they, what the misstep was, where I'd go back and be like, you know, hey, I know you you, you really love this series. And you can tell it all came from a place of love, where it's like, we can't screw this up. This is Aliens, right? Um, I would be like, the heart of Aliens was that it was so simple. It is just... Like, man versus monster. Like, that is all it is. It's all it ever really needs to be. And when you're going back and trying to tell an origin story where somehow that was the creation of the human species, like, guys, it's too much. Like, just give me another it's a, alien It's song. a cool idea. It was a dope idea, but it was, it was the best it makes a Because it makes were. aliens circular, which is cool. It was, I mean, it was... It, what they were trying to... The story they were trying to tell was awesome. I can tell when, like, Ridley sat down and was like, this is the story I want to tell. You're like, that... For, on a page... Of like a synopsis, like a one sheet or a treatment, I'd be like, please make this. Please immediately make this. Well, a group of scientists discover that there's a planet out there that, you know, has an alien presence. Like, let's yeah, let's go, let's go look into that. But please, when you're bringing people, don't bring dipshits with you. Don't bring people that are uh, uh, geographers uh, or not geographers. What what is the word I'm looking for? Geologists. Geologists. Excuse movie. me, not geographers. <laughs> geologists. Don't bring people that that that, that specialize. Do you want to know about the rocks? Reading maps and to- and topography. And um, all right, just let them come to you, Kev. Go, fine, go get your there in a second. Um, and uh, 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 have them get lost in the map that they made of the structure that they're, they're they're finding. Don't bring people that are biologists and have them not be a little bit uh, have a little trepidation when this fucking giant snake comes out of oil and looks at them and goes like this. <laughs> And it's like, oh, it's so cute. Oh, it's so cute. Because they're all like foreign. They're okay. all like a ton. Oh, this guy is like so cute. And <laughs> touch him. They touch him. He touch literally thing. reached out. I was like, this thing. That, I mean, it looks like a giant succubus. It's like. And he's like, oh, he's a little guy. He's scared of us right now. He wasn't here five minutes ago. But because this black ooze went all over the place, this ominous black ooze, and these little tiny freaking snakes became these giant things, I'm going to pet him. You know what we should do? Run? No. Let's pet him. Let's make him our pet. We'll call him Charlie. Put him on a little leaf. Oh shit, he's inside my fucking skin right now. That's how that went. For fucking him. Charlie. Didn't see this movie. Charlie went in there God. and just and he like melted the guy's face off. It was terrifying. Colin, what would you change? Two things come to mind for me. Uh the first one is Indiana Jones 4. Oh my god. Um, you just make that not happen. Yeah, and that's basically what I was gonna say was is that I'd go and I'd be like, listen, guys, remember what you guys did to Star Wars? Um You're about you, to do you're this about again. to do this to Indy. <laughs> now, Indiana Jones' last movie in 1989 was called The Last Crusade, so um it's over now. Yeah. Uh, the three Indiana Jones movies are perfect, and you don't need to touch them. Leave them They're the fuck alone. Perfect. Yeah. Like, like, don't you ruined everything with the fourth Indiana Jones movie? It was fucking nonsense. You bring in all these fucking characters, and if you want to get Harrison Ford involved in something, maybe pay him enough to be interested in being there. Because I've never seen a more disinterested fucking Indiana Jones in my entire life. That's what I'm afraid of a little bit with Han Solo as well. Uh, hopefully, and you kind of see it. You start to see yeah. it a little bit in that image where you're like, why does he look like he just got out of a, like a Hollywood brunch? Yeah. <laughs> You know, where he's like, really, he has his vest he's on really already. pretty, he's got that, like, what's funny is I went back and looked at that image, it is his jacket, but it's like a leather version of that, that old jacket. It's got the thing with the pen thing on it, with the little collar, but I'm like, it just does it like. The Chewie were home? That was my big, yeah, that's my biggest problem, or my, not, not problem, my biggest fear with Star Wars is that it's gonna suffer from that Indiana Jones 4 problem. Yeah, like, it's just, it, it, I, yeah, I would just say to them, they'd be like, well, Colin, well, Chewie, you know, you come from the future, what should we do to fix it? I'd be like, just don't <laughs> do, don't do it. it. Don't do it's it. Gonna Everyone make a ton of money. hates it. Everyone hates your movie. Don't do it. Don't rewrite it. Leave Indiana Jones alone. I appreciate you wanting to bring it back. I was excited about it. I was really excited about it. I went. I went. The, I went the opening show with my dad. One Indiana, and I never go to the movies, guys. But we laughed during the movie multiple times, and it wasn't because it was funny. You know what I mean? And then I slowly back when out. The, of yeah, the and then I'm like, and I'm, like I'm, I'm going now. <laughs> I'm going back to the future. Erase this fucking movie. Also, here's a hundred dollars. Invest it in Apple for me. <laughs> That's what I would do. Actually, um, that was not long ago. So. I was gonna say. <laughs> oh, no, 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 I mean, Indiana Jones was probably being written in 2003, 2004. That was before they really, 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 mm-hmm. really blew up. Um, the second thing I would change is the Seinfeld finale. Now, the oh, now, Jesus. now, yeah. Larry David has been beaten up a lot about this, well and I should. think I uh, my my stance on this is the, is this: the idea is brilliant because. The idea of getting everyone back together, and I mean everyone, yeah. is a really funny idea because everyone has their favorite character. Oh, do you remember the guy that opened the Pakistani restaurant? You remember the soup Nazi, the, the woman with the fucking marble rye, all these things? And he was like, yes, yes, like this is what everyone everyone says. So I'm gonna get them all back, and they're and I'm gonna and they're all gonna be character witnesses 
for these four fucking idiots. And we're finally going to get to the bottom of the fact that they all are bad people. Yeah, but that's, and I liked, and I liked that idea. It that's, was a nice idea, but, but it didn't work. The, the problem with that is the, the, the power or, or the whole point of Seinfeld was that they were fucking assholes that had no consequences of being assholes. They were always doing stupid shit. And they got away with it, right? Yeah. Like, sure, something bad would happen, but there was never real consequences. Now, it was sort of just a play on life. Like, you know, I guess there are consequences in life. But you know what I mean? Like, it was, it was a show about nothing. And so <laughs> Serious when, when, they would, when they would do anything, like, it just wouldn't matter. Nothing was supposed to matter. And at the end of that season finale, it finally mattered. And you're like, oh, I don't like this because yeah, this like, is not what I'm used to. I feel, yeah, like, I feel like what's unfortunately probably happened, I, I, I feel this way. They've not talked about it, and I don't think they will because I think he stands by, like, that show or that episode. But, like, they, the idea on paper is, I think, really good. And if I was – and if I, like, to say, like, oh, a show that was about nothing and about no consequences and about really bad people but we love them is suddenly about really how bad they are. And, like, how they watched this guy get robbed, did nothing about it, which is what the last episode's about, and then they go to, they go they to, go to they jail. Go to jail. Yeah. And, and the entire trial, they're represented by Jackie Childs, which is fucking awesome. They, like, ha- and they just bring character witness after character witness, and, they're, and they just destroy them based on all the fucked up things they did that they thought they got away with. Mm. And if I saw that on paper, I was like, that... If someone told me that before I watched, I was in eighth grade. I remember, and I was like, I was obsessed with Seinfeld back then. I was like, that sounds awesome. Like, it would have been fun awesome. if they just gotten away with it. But, they should have gotten away with it at the end. But yeah, the, the scene ends with them in a jail cell, and I'm like, this isn't. I don't know what I wanted you to do, but this wasn't no, it. This is and that's the really hard. That's the hard thing with the Seinfeld thing is I always ask people. I'm like, all right, so the, the, we all kind of unanimously agree the finale didn't work. What would you have done? How do you end it? And, like, that's the thing. It's like, I have no fucking idea how you end that show. That show has no continuity in it, except for, like, little like little characters, like Ben Neer or something like that, or, like, George's jobs or relationships. But other than that, like, there's no real continuity. You can jump in and watch any episode. So how do yeah, you really – how like, do you end it? It's not like Cheers, right, where Cheers was, like, this amazing cast, like, this ensemble cast, and it had, like, very heartfelt moments, and it was, like – it really um, relied on, you know, the relationships of Sam and Diane and then later Sam and uh, – Shit, Chris Kirsten, 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 Kirsten. characters. Um, and the I remember I don't remember a lot of Cheers, and I have since stopped watching on Netflix because I'm like, wow, this show is actually kind of formulaic. But um, yeah, it's really kind of boring. The actually. end of Cheers, I do remember, mm-hmm. which is it was Sam looking at the bar one more time, and like someone comes in for a drink, right? Yeah, they come to the like, door. Hey, you guys, everybody's like, no, nah, we're closed. Sorry, and the guy's like, oh, okay, another time, and he goes away, and Sam just looks and like turns the light off and leaves. And that was awesome. Yeah, and, and that's, like, one that's of the, exactly how I would have wanted that. Show and that's one of the most well remembered and most highly rated in terms of viewers finales ever i think seinfeld was the one that beat it actually probably and yeah it's it's i think simple would have been better and i don't know how you ended i might have ended it with just a normal episode i mean that, i think that might have been the boldest That's thing, the thing just say thing like do. the camera just walks like leaves the door and it just leaves them where you found them you've walked in one day in 1990 and you walk out in 1998 and they're just still going yeah and that's the one reason like i really and i've said it before i really do believe that show is going to come back like I I I just they, with they, all of this they like they don't have it anymore. She, yeah, like, they do. Julia Louise Dreyfus still has it. She yeah, is amazing. I started watching Feet by the way. Uh, what do you think? It's very funny. It's it's very funny. It, it's it, very it silly. gets to a place with you where you're like, this is like the first three episodes you watch, you're like, this is silly. Then it gets to a place where you're like, I'm sorry, this just broke through to the genius category. Fucking genius. Like the way they treat each other, and the back and forth of that show is like it's like none other. Um, but. Yeah, I would have done that. I would just, I would have ended it just like a normal episode. The, uh, it reminds me, you're gonna, you're gonna get pissed about me on this one. Yeah, because you love this season finale. I did not like it. I would have gone back and changed the season finale for The Sopranos. That was probably, I, I do love it. I did not. And like I'm seeing, that. dude, it was, it was, it was like ambiguous for no reason. Like nothing else in that show was ambiguous. I think why it was ambi- ambiguous. I think it was fake ambiguous. That's why I always tell people, I don't want to spoil because people got mad on Colin Greg when I spoiled the sh- an English show that ended, so ten, ended 10 years ago. Um, <laughs> That's but nonetheless, I understand. I don't, I don't want to spoil it. things unnecessarily. People have still watched The Sopranos. It's worth watching. I think it was fake ambiguous. I think it's obvious what happened. But, like, I think that they... It's not obvious. I, but I think that that's, that's David Chase's whole thing. And, 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 and Matthew Weiner, who, surprise, is writing Mad Men in the same way right now. You know mm. what I mean? I, if you guys are watching the last... No. The last, I think the last, the, end, the last few episodes of The Sopranos, the last season, is full of symbolism. Yeah. And... So is the last season of Mad Men. Yeah, but Mad Men's like the, Mad Men's. Well, we should. That should be a topic for another day. Yeah. Right. Like, I love the way Mad Men is ending. Me, me too. And, and I she, love it. And Cheryl is like, 
Cheryl's like disagrees, and I'm like, no, there is symbolism is everywhere. It. There's this symbolism in the books he's go. reading. There's symbolism in like where he is and who he's talking to, and the stories that are unraveling and the characters they bring back. Yeah, he's it's got this all... one episode where he's reading The Godfather, and you're like, oh, a story about a guy who wanted to take over the world and ended up destroying his life. Yeah, and you I know? think was, like, I didn't he had to see... kill his entire family because of his power lust. I didn't see Spoilers. it. I didn't see it, but in one of the episodes, and this isn't really a spoiler because it's really just like on a desk or somewhere. Like Dante's Inferno is there, and I'm like, yes, yeah. yes. Like there was a piece of about it. I, I didn't see it in the episode i don't know what episode it is but i'm like yes you know like he that, is in limbo yeah. like that is what the whole show is fucking about you know what i mean like I, and so there's like little things like that where i'm like yes yes it's it's brilliant so I, I i know some people really hate that ending of sopranos especially because it looked like the tv went out which i think is a, one of the coolest things like it looks like your tv died um when, no, it, was, get, it wasn't like, that it was just that it, i i found it i liked how that scene started and i thought i was like this is perfect this is a great it's hard to talk about this without spoiling it. But I'm like, this is actually a great way to end this. Just like, it's just going to be like any other day. Like, it's just life's just going to keep going on. And that's what this is all about. And that's really what Tony's struggle was, where he was trying for like, what, seven or eight seasons or maybe five or six, I can't remember. He was trying to keep control over his life, this, this position he had sort of been thrust into. And he was battling between wanting to be the sort of the boss of boss, the cop of the capo, or, and being just sort of like a, almost – a real good, decent human being. And then finally at the end of the show, we sort of see him kind of sit down with his family, which has been all the thing that roots him to like reality. And then we get sort of ambiguity after that. And I'm like, it would have been just so beautiful to have them just sit down and we just sort of dolly out and that's it. And like, you just want happy. Like, endings guess what? No, it's not a happy ending. Cause he was a miserable human being. Like he was fucking really depressed and sad. Mm -hmm. Like, um, seeing a therapist for Christ's sake in the very first episode. And like that, and that's the whole, not the first episode, first season. Um, so, like, I didn't need to know that maybe he potentially, you know, something might befall him that's bad, right? Um, I don't need that because that's the whole show was about that. Yeah, that could happen at any point. Like, he was the boss of bosses, for Christ's sake. Like, someone's going to try to take him out at any point. So, why yeah, don't I'd love to talk to you about this more because I feel, yeah, like, I... Yeah, I don't want to spoil it either. All I know is I see incredible Soprano shades in the end of Mad Men. Well, I'm seeing and that, like, but, and it's, like, but I think they learned from... He learned from what happened with Sopranos where he's like, I'm going to end this in, in a way that is befitting of every one of these characters. And I find it fascinating. Like, I would – it's not really a spoiler how they're ending it. If you're watching it right now, it's not like there's anything big happening. It's just no. that, like, all of these characters who have wanted these things for so long finally got them, and it's not necessarily what it's supposed to be. And that is just fucking life. And that's you know the what I mean? Thing, like, yeah, like, that we, is just life. We don't know because when we're filming this now, the last episode of Man Man hadn't aired. Has, has not. So we have oh, not seen true. it. We don't know the last episode. Yeah, so like, but so I agree with you. There's no the, break in the window and spoil it for us. So the, the brilliant... Future the, people. <laughs> the, br the, brilliance of, uh, the brilliance, I think, of it, and I think why some people are disappointed so far, is that nothing seems to be happening. And I'm like, no, but this there's is... there's so much but I'm like, happening. there is a lot happening. Like, if you really, if you really look at it. So... Yeah, anyway, Sopranos, yeah, I, I respect that. A lot of people, dude, people hated that from the second that happened. I, I'll never forget no, that because I, I watched it with other I was people. Like, oh, God. And I was like, that's all. I, I was like, what a like tremendously that. pretentious way to end a really good show. Mm. Like, actually, I take it back. What a tremendously pretentious way to end a, a show that was fantastic for the first couple seasons and then kind of really kind of went weird. It's there in the middle. Because yeah, the last season became sort of almost a soap opera caricature of what it had been, where they were like, all of a sudden, sort of like hyper. Italian all of a sudden, and there was hyper crazy. You know what I mean? Like there was no subtlety. I left feel like they had. The I feel ended. like they had to end it. I feel they like they were to. over it. Like they were just like, we have to end this, so we have like to crunch everything David Chase wanted in this to begin with. The funnier thing with that is that he said it was like a year ago. He like basically talked about what happened, like what he happened after, like during that scene and after that scene, and oh, yeah. then claimed I think that he was misquoted or something like that. And I'm like, I don't. I, I I give him the benefit of the doubt, but I'm like, I don't think so. I think you just told everyone what happened, and you didn't want to tell everyone what happened yeah. because you wanted to go to your grave. Mm -hmm. like like with everyone asking questions and you basically just answered the question and then and but then it was like i didn't say that i, I people have to look it up i don't remember what he said he was something like i didn't say that or like i wasn't i was right. misquoted or it was no, out of context or whatever yeah. but i was like but you did motherfucker. I, I mean overall yeah it's a phenomenal series like, i give it a lot of shit but yeah I'm italian and i feel like it's racist but uh <laughs> no i'm just joking I'm i might be i might be alone in this but like you were saying that like you wish it just ended on just them sitting at the, the yeah. table and it's just like to me there's been a bunch of different things where I, I see things as like it ends and then we get a little bit more that we de didn't necessarily need mm -hmm. but i always look at that kind of as just like an alternate ending almost where it's like i know that it, it is the canon ending or whatever but sure. it's just like to you the ending could just be the table right well that's like, the thing that's what it wants 
Do you remember the ending? Well, yeah, I, I, know, I know, but like right. just pre- the implication but that's was what, that that's there was saying. maybe potentially something that happens afterward. Where I was like, I don't understand why they felt the need to do that because yeah. this character is in his own hell. Mm-hmm. So the threat of violence is not really that big of a deal for me as a viewer because I've watched this guy go through, do have to do terrible things to stay in power, have to kill his best friends because if he doesn't do that, he'll be viewed as weak and someone will come kill him. Like, remember, who was it? Steve Buscemi had to like hire Steve Buscemi and Steve Buscemi just like clean house mm-hmm. and it was awesome because you're like, wow, he's really terrifying when he's like sitting at your door with a double barrel shotgun. <laughs> there was all that stuff. Like he did horrible things and you're like, this guy's like, you know, he just is who he is. He's a complex yeah. human being, and like he has to live with himself, and that's how that should have ended. Yeah, you know? Sopranos yeah. is good stuff. Have you not seen it? You still have not watched it, Greg? Or you, I've you... watched p- bits and pieces. Oh, I've man. seen the ending. I've dropped it. What a episodes. what a show, man! What Cause, a show! Because for me, th- there's two things specifically. Death Note. I always talk about it. That show has a very definitive end, and then it goes on for another mm-hmm. 15 episodes, and it yeah. didn't need to. Didn't need to. But the way I see it is, it's just like, do I wish those 15 episodes didn't happen? No, I'm happy I got them. It gave me something different, but. That series could have ended, and it was a great end. Yeah. And another example is Metal Gear Solid Four, where it's like that thing ends, and then it keeps going. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And things get fucking weird. But it's like, do I wish that didn't happen? No, I fucking love that it happened. Yeah, because it's with, ridiculous. And with it's like Metal Gear, that's the style. Like yeah, I've but played. You know, no, this, granted, you played, played two seconds of Metal two Gear. hours of Ground Zero. Yeah. You think you fucking know everything? You gotta come here it, and tell me something about Metal Gear. The first hour of it, they introduce like fifteen characters. None of whom, like, three of whom have an insane backstory where I was like, I'm trying to read through, because I don't know if you guys probably didn't do it, but, like, I'm like, oh, I don't know who any of these characters are. So I'm going to read about uh, uh, Chico and Paz. Yeah. And um, they have, like, a whole backstory thing. And so I started reading, and then I kept reading, and then I kept reading. And then about an hour and a half into it, my wife's like, are you playing a game? Or are you just reading a fucking book? Like, yeah. and I'm like, I haven't even started playing the game yet. To be, to be fair, Nick, like, this is coming from, like, a huge Metal Gear fan. I don't know any of those characters either because they were only in the PSP games. <laughs> Weird, right? And then we get Skullface guy, and I'm like, that guy's dope. Don't see him again. I'm sure we'll see him in the Phantom Pain. Yeah, um, he's new. But that's Metal Gear. Like that is that style. That is a very Japanese yeah, Eastern style of telling the end story. of four is something different. Yeah, it's but just like, you, you're wow. talking about Death Note, but that's Death Note. Death like the jet like we subscribe so wholeheartedly to the sort of what they call classic Coke way of storytelling, right? Three act structure, character. Uh, it's always the hero's journey, always, right? Whereas when you start watching anime, it's part of the reason why it's hard to get into is when you watch certain anime, you're like, this is not what I'm used to, man. Like, all of a sudden, they'll just go off on a tangent and start telling a story about something else. Mm -hmm. And all the symbolism will come into play. And what we're used to is we need that set up in the first act or else we don't feel validated in the third act when that comes to fruition. Whereas in, like, Metal Gear, it's it's totally okay for Hideo Kojima to be like, you know what? I'm going to write a character into this right now that you've never seen before and you might never see again, but he plays a very pivotal role in the story. Drebin. That's okay. Oh, my God, Drebin. But that's Decoy octopus. But that's Decoy what I'm talking about. Like, can you imagine a movie, if you were watching a movie like that, and all of a sudden, just in the random third act, some sure. huge guy came in and was like, I'm more powerful than anyone. You're like, no, you're fucking Who not. Who the fuck are you? Who the fuck are you, guy? I haven't, I haven't seen you for two hours. Like, as an American, I'd be like, this is unconstitutional. <laughs> just as an American, you'd have a problem no, with but that. No, but that's what I'm saying. In Japan, I know, little, I know. They don't I know. care. They're like, oh, that's cool that they've introduced this. Like, I don't. It's okay to throw me a wild card. Sure, sure. While. But I'll agree with you on Death Note. I was wondering... Should we hit just end it now? I'm desperately trying to, yeah. No, I mean, I'm not <laughs> saying the topic. I mean the show. We should end the show now. It's oh, been, it's been what, We're breaking that. I mean, the one that we said we weren't. We'll break yeah. into two. We'll, we'll figure it out. To. Because the Coke topic became a topic about grandma's basement. That's true. I mean, that's but then we talked about it, then we didn't break. Whatever, fine. They'll figure it. Well, spoilers, why, why future not? people. Yeah, what's the big deal? We broke it up. Just you got to break it up in a more ineloquent way. I don't think. I don't think it's a big deal. Because this is this is still, I think, an unusually. It's a long episode. It's long really episode. long, yeah. Well, it's just great. Yeah, no, this is a great episode. This is a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun with you guys. Mm-hmm. I like you That's guys good. a lot. It's good to be back. Where were like we? I don't know. I feel like we haven't seen each other in <laughs> yeah, six Yeah, I know. Months. It really... Like, you were, hell, no no lie. Week. I think since... So you went to LA on... LA, LA. Sunday night. Oh, wait, yeah. You weren't even in LA that long. When was the last time I saw you guys? <laughs> it has Thursday. been You didn't come over on Friday. Okay, yeah, I wasn't so here Thursday? Friday. So Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. It's now Tuesday today? Today's Wednesday. Today's Wednesday. Since Thursday, I have not slept before 4 a.m. Jesus. Every night. And I just realized really how long good. it's been. You look really good. Oh, you don't mm. have bags under your eyes and stuff. Mm. Yeah, I don't know. You look great. Well, it's the youth. When do you get up You don't smoke anymore. I want to wrap to get here. You never smoked. Oh, actually, no. I haven't. I've, I've been getting up at like 11, maybe. Oh, okay. And then working from then until 4. Sure. <laughs> this live show is going to be the fucking... It's. I said it's this on awesome. Twitter. It's going to be my Mona Lisa. Wow. Yeah. But you got to keep working afterwards, though. 
Mm-hmm. You can't retire. Like oh yeah. No. Da Vinci did. I'll keep doing stuff. Did Da Vinci retire after the Mona Lisa? No, no he true. became a Ninja Turtle. Yep. Ladies and gentlemen, that's the Game Over Greggy show each and every week. Four, sometimes okay. five best friends bring a random topic to you. I got you. I got you good. I was trying to deviate. Damn, you really got you really me. Did. I was yeah. like, is he You're dying? both are ready. I thought you broke. This table. No. I missed it. This is the first time I missed it. What's well, because I, well, right? I, I, I deviated no, no, to throw no, no, you off for your foreboding now. This that's is my bad luck, Before, right? That was really Why are you trying to change idea? shit? Why does it matter? Winning Why do we? This is a hack. Transform- what is this our Transformers for? Yeah, Transformers. You get the show on Patreon.com early slash kind of funny. <laughs> Go to YouTube.com slash kind of funny day by day topic by topic. You know all this. You've made it through this rigmarole. Thank you for watching. We're excited to see you at Kind of Funny Live. Unless it's already happened, then we were excited when we saw you there. We hope cool videos have posted. If uh, the door is like locked and everybody burned inside, it was probably Kevin's fault. We're sorry about that. Until next time, it's been our pleasure to serve you.